Check out the instructor's comments at the end of this video for more info. We're going to do a demo here on how to adjust uh, throttle cable free play. Let's show you what that is here. Any type of cable operated system, those cables are going to stretch over time and when we do maintenance or tune-ups or anything, we have to adjust how much this play is. So we're gonna go through that procedure here in a second. Most technicians are not gonna go ahead and make a little uh, you know, taped off hand grip here. We're doing it just so that you can see it better while we're training. You guys will get a feel for this where you will learn to pick that you know, three to five millimeter, this one's two to six, um, just by feel. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, you can see one of our other videos, that technically we need to set this on the ground. The final assembly needs to be done on the ground because we need to do lock to lock so that we can have free play in the specified amount throughout the entire range of adjustment. But since we're in a place here on the bike that we can see everything, we wanted to go ahead and show that. Let's look at our two different places that we can actually adjust. You guys saw this on your carburetors? Yep. Okay, and this is a push-pull throttle cable. Can you see right here how much that cable when it's loose is flopping around? Yep. Okay, look at inside of here how much that's flopping around. It, the reason we need to also adjust this, and we don't have them tight right now because we're in the procedure, is that when you snap that throttle back with a, a really excessive play in there, there's a chance that it could come off to the side. If you got really uh, a lot of free play on this one, do you see where it could possibly even wrap around that cam there? Mm -hmm. If we have any throttle cable issues, we could end up in a stuck throttle position and it is gonna be a bad day, okay? The next adjuster we have here is the one that's often overlooked because you can't see it on factory cables and we have this rubber boot here. I'm gonna let Jacob go ahead and expose that. See how it rolled up over itself? Yep. Yep. That's your friend on installation because when I go back on here, I'm going to basically just roll that back on. Now, we left this dry purposely for this video. When I go to put these back on, I like to make sure and put some lube on there and they come on and off really easy. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you guys see here is we have our rigid part of our cable, our flexible cable in here, and then we have uh, an adjuster and a lock nut. As we extend this out, it's going to take up that free play or shorten these distances in here. Does that make sense? The next thing we ask ourselves is do we adjust the handlebar first or do we adjust the carburetor? <coughs> carburetor? We adjust the carburetor. And the reason that is, is that this one's gonna be covered up and we aren't gonna have access to it. Over time, we wanna be able to go in and do this required maintenance scheduled service without having to take a bunch of stuff off. That's why these cables they have these adjusters up here or outside. Sometimes you'll find them a little bit further down the cable. You wanna make sure that we can uh, do that adjustment from here. If I went ahead and lengthened this and did all the adjustment here, when that cable stretches in the future, I don't have anything left. I would have to remove the gas tank to get access and go ahead and do it down here. That doesn't seem like our customer would like that bill very much, right? Right. So the order, that's important. But instead of just kind of guessing and, and playing around before I show you how to adjust it, let's talk about you know, how we should use the service manual to do this. Okay. If I look here in maintenance, it's chapter three. As I go along here, I could start to see throttle operation. That's just an everyday maintenance. I want you to see how important this is. On specifications, the very first thing they're showing for maintenance is throttle grip free play. This is a control item, so it's a safety issue. So we say two to six millimeter or a half inch to quarter inch. First off, before we mess with anything, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, two to six millimeter. What I did is I went ahead and just set this in the middle. And notice here, when, the, when I snap the throttle, do you see where it, it we're gonna use this as a stationary point. So we're gonna base how far this moves from start to stop off the stationary point. That's what our free play is, right? So I'll just go ahead and snap the throttle and let it go. Check this out, doesn't that look like it's about in the middle of this range here? Yep. You have to take the grip though and take up the free play. Okay, that's where people get wrong. If I do this and I set from here to here, I'm gonna be so grossly loose. Look at that, I'd be way over here. You can see how far that would be. It'd be a long distance, right? Yep. So I'll go ahead and snap that. That just kind of centers things, if you will. I'm gonna go here and what you're gonna see 
is you're going to see that I can get my point then of where I actually want to land. I'm going to go ahead and make a little mark there at our four millimeters here real quick. And guys, this says two to six. It's not one of these things like a piston where it needs to be exactly down to a thousand. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so there's our range. You can see how far over we are. Another thing that some people will like to do is they'll take just their veneer caliper. They will measure, you know, that four millimeter, whatever, put a couple black marks on it, and then they'll um, have this handy. I've seen technicians where they've marked their ruler like this, and they're working on bikes all day long. I mean, they're doing carbs, cable adjustments, different things. They just leave the marks on there, and to them, they know that's my throttle cable free play. You're gonna find out that these are very consistent. Between the multiple models we looked at today, this one allows a pretty tight one at two millimeter, but we saw three to five millimeter. If you did like four millimeter on dang near everything, I bet you'd find out that that would work on just about any model possible. But I recommend looking it up in your manual to be sure. Make sense? Yep. So you can see here that I could go ahead and just use this as well. I don't need tape or anything. I just hold this on here. I'm gonna peel this off for a second here and show you something else. Do you see the grip glue line from when they manufactured that grip? Yep. Couldn't I use that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I need to stress something that I think is a mistake as well, and we talked about this in class this morning. Right now, this is closed all the way up, right? Yep. Okay, so the idea is if we adjust here and get our free place set at that four millimeters, the idea is, is that as the cable stretches over time, we are always going to want to lengthen this. When mm -hmm. cables stretch, they get longer. Here's where the problem is. On the bench with the wheel locked and you can't do the lock to lock, you want to give yourself a little bit of threads in here. If I, if I set this perfect here and this is all the way as short as possible and I go to do my lock to lock and it actually gets tight on me, what do I have to do to fix it? pull the tank back off, readjust at the car. I'm doing all this work. Does that make sense? So this is a little tip and trick here. This is real common that they're an eight and a 10 millimeter. Go ahead here and just loosen this up. Okay, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna give myself like two or three threads that are gonna allow me to be able to loosen this for the lock to lock. That makes sense? Yep. Good idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, so just leave this alone. Let me make another tip. Don't put this rubber boot on there. Don't tighten these. You know, leave this off. This is one of the very last things that you're gonna, you know, close up, if you will, before you go to hit your starter button, okay? You might, you know, hook up your battery or something, but you know, we need to think about checking oil and things like that. But if you cover this up, you're gonna forget, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go down to the cable and now what we're gonna want is a couple of 10 millimeters and just follow through in the manual here and see since this is a dual cable setup if they have a, a desired order that they want them adjusted. Not specifying uh, a order of what these are. You are gonna find like Lexi you're doing that R1 they tell you to do the D-cell cable first and then do the Excel cable so you might find that they want it done in a certain order. Here's my cable. You can see the play that I have in here. Oh, do you guys notice something here too? Is this one adjustable? Nope. No. So do you think right now would be a good idea to go ahead and get this adjusted? Yeah. Yep. I want you to learn something about cables right now too. This barrel, hopefully you'll catch this in the video. I'm going to hold the cable, okay? Do you see how it turns? Mm -hmm. yeah. and the cable doesn't, yeah. you have to be really careful. You're working on older bikes, that's mm -hmm. been uh, subjected to rust. If the rust gets down in there and that has seized the metal to the cable and you start just cranking on this, that's gonna put a twist in the cable, potentially breaking it, and now you're gonna have a bigger problem because water and rust are really gonna be able to get in there. Make sense? So mm -hmm. let me model that one more time. Did you see how I held it? What, you think that'd be a good place for lube? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this one here, there's a notch on the cable here. I don't have to hold it. I can go ahead and I just snug that up. This is not something you weld on. I, I get carb jobs that come in this back bracket's actually bent because people have just like, you know, taken a wrench like this 
and grabbed it out here. Did you notice where I was holding the wrench when I did it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, not to have as much leverage. So if I follow that cable up and follow it around, okay, that goes into here and there's no adjustment on that one. So if there gets to be a problem with this cable where it's just flopping around like crazy, what's the only thing we can do? Replace it. Replace it, okay. So let's go into our big culprit area here. I do not want to get rid of all of the threads. Are you with me on that? Yep. I want to have a little meat left on the bone, if you will. So let's see what's going to happen. I'll go ahead and just snug this down. Do you think it's, it makes a better uh, job as you're trying to figure out where you are by just uh, getting that to snug up? Yeah. Yep. Okay, now let's check our scale up here. Oh, got pretty lucky, huh? What do you think of that? Looks, Looks good. good. Done and call it a day, right? So then, to make sure that I'm actually done, now I'm going to hold this top nut. Okay, I'm gonna tighten these two up, snugging it up. We're not even talking about routing in this video, but I mean, I can't stress how important it is. Okay, so if, if this is where I'm at, I'm gonna check it multiple times. Like I said, leave this alone, get the bike off the bench, do the lock to lock, finding the tightest spot on the bike, and then set your free play from there.